Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and this is the last in my four part series on the Sage or Breville Barista Express. After this video, this machine's been given away to a Patreon supporter, also known as a credited coffee botherer. To find more about that, go to patreon.com forward slash coffeeblogkev. If you've not seen the other videos in this series, click here or see the links in the description below. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a milk steaming tutorial, specifically with the Barista Express. What I found when I was first learning to steam milk is that I was watching tutorials done on different machines to the one I was using, often commercial machines. And what was working for the person doing the tutorials quite often just wasn't working for me. I then discovered that steaming milk on commercial machines is completely different to steaming milk on most home espresso machines specifically when it comes to the timings. It's the same process, but the timings can be completely different depending on the machine you're using. Even machines from the same manufacturer, so among the Sage or Breville espresso machines, the timings are slightly different. The process is the same, but the timings are different. So I think it makes sense to watch a tutorial on the specific machine you're using, which is why I'm doing these tutorials on the individual machines. If you have the Bambino Plus, click here for a steaming tutorial for that machine. So first of all, I'm just gonna talk through the steaming process before I actually demonstrate it. So there are three things we're wanting to do to the milk or milk alternative, and that is aerate, distribute, and heat. Aeration or stretching means to pull air into the milk to create microfoam. Distribution means to get the milk spinning to create a vortex in order to distribute the microfoam throughout the milk. Heating happens after aeration, and at the same time of distribution and involves heating the milk, funnily enough. So talk about milk volume first. With most milk jugs, and this one is the Motta 500ml milk jug, I find the sweet spot in terms of volume is anywhere from a couple of centimetres below the indentation of the spout to a couple of centimetres above. If you want to steam smaller amounts of milk for smaller flat whites, cortado, piccolo, etc., just get a smaller milk jug rather than trying to steam smaller amounts of milk in a bigger milk jug, because that is really quite difficult. So next, I'm gonna talk about listening to the milk, and in particular, hissing, roaring, and screaming. If your milk is hissing, or kind of quiet hissing or ripping paper sound, that's the sound of aeration that we're normally going for. If you're hearing more of a whooshing sound or a roaring sound, that's the sound of more aggressive aeration, which tends to create the stiffer foam you'd associate with more old school cappuccino, which is fine if that's what you're going for. If you're hearing a screaming sound, that means you're steaming the milk, but you've not aerated it. If you're getting that sound while you're trying to aerate the milk, it means you need to drop the jug a bit and get the steam tip slightly closer to the surface as air isn't been introduced into the milk. Next, talk about one position. Pull the one straight out like this, and then lock the spout, or lock the wand, I should say, into the spout like this. And then tilt the bottom of the jug down towards the drip tray, so that the steam tip is now pointing into the center, towards the center of the jug. And next, tilt the jug, whichever way you prefer, whichever way feels more natural to you, so that you're halfway between the centre and the edge of the milk jug. Lance Hedrick has a great way of explaining this and I've put a link in the description below to that. So if you're not quite sure about this part, watch that video. He's a latte art champion and a professional barista trainer and he does a great job in his tutorials of explaining these things. Next, to talk about timings. You need to get the aeration phase over before the milk gets warm, somewhere between 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. And by the way, start off with nice cold milk straight out of the fridge. You don't want room temperature milk because you don't have as much time there to aerate the milk because it's already slightly warm. The milk temperature you want to get it to is completely up to you, but I'd usually go for around 65 degrees Celsius or 60 to 65 degrees. If you take milk to hotter than that, you start to burn away the lactose and you lose the sweetness, so it starts to taste bad. With boiler machines, especially on more powerful, more commercial end machines, you'd start with aeration and you don't have much time at all to get the aeration done before moving to the distribution stage and continuing to heat the milk. With thermoblock or thermocoil machines, 
and the Barista Express is a thermocoil machine. You don't quite have the same steam power as with most boiler machines, but that's actually a good thing for learning to steam milk as it's more forgiving. But what I found to be the best process with thermoblock and thermocoil machines, which don't quite have the same steam power, is to add a milk spinning phase before the aeration phase. So with the Sage Barista Express, the Barista Pro, the Duotemp Pro and the Bambino Plus and most other entry level machines with thermocoils or thermoblocks rather than steam boilers, I'd start out first by burying the steam tip, keeping the jug at the right angle in order to allow the milk to start rolling or spinning, getting the vortex going. And how long to do this for depends on the machine. On the Barista Express, with the single hole steam tip and the thermocoil, the original thermocoil from Sage or Breville. I usually find this to be around 10 seconds, while it's more like five or six seconds with the Bambino Plus and the Barista Pro due to the newer, faster thermojet and the four hole steam tip. So we're just slightly burying the tip into the milk. We're not aerating yet, and we're just doing this on the Barista Express for around 10 seconds, just until you get the milk spinning. You might hear a bit of screaming during this initial process, but it's all right, it won't last long. So once the milk is spinning, about 10 seconds, we then drop the jug slightly, keeping that angle the same until we hear the ripping paper sound. Once the milk starts to feel warm, or if you use a thermometer about 35, maybe towards 40 degrees Celsius, you need to stop aeration by just lifting the jug up very slightly to bury the tip. We're only talking a couple of millimetres here just to stop that hissing or ripping paper sound. And by the way, if you want stiffer foam, if you like the old school cappuccino foam, just drop the jug slightly more so that instead of a hissing or ripping paper sound, you get a louder whooshing or roaring sound. This is a sound of larger amounts of air being introduced to create bigger bubbles. If you want wetter foam for latte art though, stick to the ripping paper sound. So this is gonna be around 50, maybe 55 seconds total steaming time to the point that you stop the aeration with the Brister Express and with the Geotemp Pro, the machines with the original thermocoil. The machines with the faster thermojet, the Bambino Plus and the Barista Pro, take around 30, 35 seconds of steaming time before you stop the aeration. And also as you stop aerating at that point, you should see that the milk has started to change texture. It should look more glossy. So now remember we've still got that same angle, same one position, and now the microphone is distributing. So we've raised the jug up, we've buried the tip slightly, and now we're just spinning the milk, letting the milk roll, continuing to heat the milk and distribute the microphone. Once the milk is at around 60, 65 degrees Celsius, stop the steam, wipe the wand and purge the wand. Always do that because a little bit of milk can end up getting stuck in the one tip and that's rank. And then give the jug a knock because even though I don't actually think it does anything, it's supposed to break up the bigger bubbles but I never found that it does. Do it anyway because that's just what we do. And next, swirl the milk. And this does definitely do something. As you're doing this, you'll see the milk getting more glossy, more shiny. We're just polishing off the milk here, giving it a final touch of distribution and then we're done. So I'll demonstrate now and I'll switch to voiceover so you can actually hear me over the sound of the Barista Express. Okay, so wand is locked into the spout. Half, quarter, steam on. So the tip's buried now, I'm just trying to get the vortex started. About 10 seconds, the milk's spinning. Drop the jug slightly and I'm just aiming for that ripping paper sound of aeration. So now we're aerating and we'll be doing this for about 40, 45 seconds until the jug starts to feel slightly warm and the milk starts to look glossy. So that's enough aeration now. I'm just lifting the jug slightly to stop the aeration, continue rolling the milk and distributing the microfoam. So 
So I can't keep my hand on the jug for more than about half a second now, which means we're about the right temperature, around 60, 65 degrees Celsius. But obviously if you want to, you can use a thermometer. So stop the steam, wipe the tip, and purge the wand. I'm knocking the jug on the worktop now for no apparent reason because I'm convinced that doesn't actually do anything, but I do it anyway. And then I'm swirling the jug, and as you can see, the milk is getting more glossy as I do that. So there you go, steaming milk with the Barista Express. I will do one with the Barista Pro very soon, but it's almost the same. It's just that the initial rolling phase is about five or six seconds, and the aeration phase takes about 30, 35 seconds, and the total steam time is around 45 to 50 seconds. Same or very similar as a Bambino Plus. By the way, click here if you want to see the milk steaming tutorial with the Gadget Classic Pro. So thank you very much for watching and for a latte art tutorial click here for Lance Hedrick's great video on latte art. If the video isn't there yet it will be in a second. If you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way please click the like button. Thank you. It's not just a vanity thing. If you click the like button you help the video to do better on YouTube and it helps the channel as well. And don't forget, if you want to become an official coffee botherer, you need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to this channel. And to become an accredited coffee botherer, also known as a Patreon supporter, just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog kev. Tatty bye.